Hi everyone. Welcome to Dokami. So today we are going to learn yet another important topic in pediatrics which is breastfeeding. So today I'll take you through the various aspects of breastfeeding um, focusing on both the theory part of it and the practical aspect and we'll be dealing with a few important points which will be important for your next exam. So here we are going to deal all about breastfeeding, the components of breast milk, advantages of breastfeeding, the different types of milk, physiology of lactation, the breastfeeding positions, technique and at last the problems in breastfeeding. Now this let's see a case scenario. So you have a 28 year old primary mother who has just delivered a term appropriate for gestational age baby by vaginal delivery. So you are the in charge doctor in the labor room who has to take care of the baby. How will you counsel this new mother regarding breastfeeding? That's the question. So let's see how to go about it. So you know breastfeeding is a natural process. It's a natural food for the baby, or the newborn or the infant and this is the most physiological of all foods that you can give to the baby. And breast milk is species specific. That told Humans are the only species that go about and take milk of other species. We take cow's milk, we take cam camel's milk, buffalo milk. So we take all types of milk, but all other species are very, you know, uh, they stick to their own species milk. So uh, the components and the quality and the constitution of the breast milk is very specific to each species. It is free from contamination and at a desired temperature appropriate for the baby, easily digestible with optimal fluidity and cause it is the most economical of all feeds that you can give to a baby. Right. Now let's come to the importance of breast milk. So what are the biological factors or the immunological factors which are there in breast milk? So this is a very common question that you get for your theory exams. Biological factors or immunological factors, you can also get many MCQs from this part. So, basically we are comparing with the other animal milks that humans consume, right? Okay, so the protein content of breast milk is low. So, that means, uh, though, uh, you know, uh, different species have different quality of milk, the protein content. So, the protein content of the cow's milk, that is one animal milk we commonly consume, is really high. So, uh, the protein content decides how fast your baby grows. So, our babies grow at a slow pace compared to a, a, a rabbit baby which grows very, you know, rab babies of rabbits are very small at birth. They suddenly grow in size or a cow, you know, they, you see, if you see a calf, a calf is very small but suddenly they grow and become big. So, their protein content is really high. For us, because we only have a very slow postnatal growth, you know, our babies do not become adults in a few months, do they? No. So, uh, unlike animals, the protein content of the human breast milk is on the lower side. But this said and done, the quality of the breast milk is superior to the other animal milk that we consume. So, the lacked albumin levels and the whey protein levels are really high in human milk. So, you know that there are two types of protein in milk. One is casein and another is whey protein. Casein is the inferior type of protein which is found in high quantities in cow's milk. But whey protein is the better protein for humans which is found in good quantities in human milk. Also, lacked albumin is the protein in human milk and lacked globulin which is not a uh, very... Uh, appropriate protein for the human milk that is found in cow's milk. So, the uh, amount of lacked albumin and whey protein is high. So, this can be a question. There are high levels of cysteine and sulfurated taurine. So, your um, amino acids with the uh, sulfur groups are really high. Your essential fatty acids which is very essential for the growth of your brain and the other parts of the body is really high in your breast milk. So, linoleic acid and dexaoxanoic acid, they are um, essential fatty acids are in a higher level in human breast milk. Then you have high levels of galactolipids, high tryptophan to neutral amino acid ratios. The lipase level is high. So, there is lipase in your human milk. This helps in digestion of the fat that the baby. So, there is fat in the uh, breast milk. So, lipase helps in the digestion of fat. 
the lactose content in is really high that is why human milk is the sweetest of all milk okay the sweetest of all milk is human milk next to that comes as milk as as milk is next to that okay also this lactose helps in the retention of the calcium and the iron which is there in milk and the calcium phosphorus ratio is more than 2 though the calcium the overall or uh, the gross calcium content is more in cow's milk but uh, the bioavailability so the amount of calcium that enters your body is best in human milk compared to your cow's milk right enzymes you have the various enzymes like amylase which helps in digestibility hematinic factors are better utilized so there is lactoferrin which protects against many infections epidermal factors in peptides like uh, epithelial growth factor platelet derived all those growth factors are in a higher level ash content is low so there is less solute load on your kidneys and polyamines like uh, spermin and putrescine which enhance growth are found in higher quantities in breast milk then the immunological factors as you know mother's milk is teeming with immunological factors so there is a first vaccine of course colostrum as you know is the first vaccine that you give the child and even mother's milk all the immunological factors the antibodies that the baby gets at birth is from the mother right okay through the placenta and after that he gets it through the breast milk so immunoglobulins like iga igg igm uh, these are found in Uh, good quantities in breast milk then you have cells like lymphoid cells macrophages which helps the body's defense system your complement system factors are there unsaturated lactoferrin i told you the that protects against infections then you have antiviral and anti staphylococcal factors lysozyme lactoperoxidases growth factors for lactobacillus which is a good bacilli then you have parva which protects the body against malaria this is a uh, age old question that you get and lipase skill amoeba and giardia this is again a question so you can get many mcqs from this part of the question of course this comes as a theory question for almost all exams now coming to the immunological axes that are involved in breastfeeding so there are two immunological axes which are involved in breastfeeding one is the bronco mammary axis and then you have the entero mammary axis i'll not go into the details of this because you just have to know the two axes at your level now what are the advantages of breastfeeding so advantages of breastfeeding when you talk of advantages of breastfeeding you have advantages for the mother you have advantages for the baby you have advantages for the family then you have advantages for the hospital and then you have advantages for the society as a whole so when you are asked about advantages of breastfeeding for example in a theory exam you should mention the advantages to all these five uh, uh, hierarchies okay so what do you think will be the advantages to the baby we already spoke about that this is an easily available easily digestible food that you can give to the baby and it is at the right temperature which is optimal for the baby then we saw all these factors so what is that in short breast milk helps in the growth of the baby and for the um, immunity helps in immunity preventing baby from the various diseases and of course the incidence of diseases like diarrhea pneumonia asthma is less in breastfed children and of course brain growth that is something what every parent wants brain growth or the iq your iq points are really high if you are exclusively breastfed and then it promotes emotional bonding so because breastfeeding is not just physical there is a big emotional component to breastfeeding uh, and this um, helps the emotional bond i know breastfeeding is not something where you can actually get only mcqs is more of a concept type of topic you have to know the concepts more you know facts factuals techniques so uh, please pay attention try to get the points that we talk in between because um, if you are writing a theory you can write lots and lots about breastfeeding but when you attempt mcqs uh, you know a few points a few facts may come where you have to find out the correct one or you have to you know um, take away the wrong ones and then reach the correct answer now it promotes the bonding with the mother and the infant it helps in the psychomotor and social development of the baby and of course personality building and emotional stability 
Now coming to the advantages to the mother. So what are the advantages to the mother? One, the mother-baby bonding is there, which we already told. Because we know there are two hormones involved in breastfeeding, you all know that prolactin and oxytocin. And you know oxytocin is a hormone that helps in the contraction of the uterus. So after delivery, there should be involution of the uterus. You would have learnt in your obstetric classes. For this involution, oxytocin is the hormone. And when you breastfeed, oxytocin is released in the body and that helps in the early uterine involution. And of course, you know, where as long as you are breastfeeding, there is no ovulation and this is a natural contraceptive measure. So this is not up to six months, but when you are exclusively breastfeeding up to even three to four months, this can act as a natural contraception. And of course, there is decreased rates of breast cancer and ovarian cancer and it's easily available, cheap. Mother, you know, the, it, it helps in the emotional aspect of the mother. Many mothers have problems like postpartum blues or postpartum depression or uh, you know they feel really low after uh, their delivery but breastfeeding can help improve their confidence can improve their mental status and emotional well-being and it protects from obesity because breast milk production breastfeeding takes lots of needs lots of energy so it helps break down the fat of the mother and uh, you know contrary to what women believe women believe that if they breastfeed they lose their body shape it is the other way around so this is one point you can use for counseling because uh, there will be no uh, lady who would no, not want to look beautiful you know all of them want to be slim and beautiful so you can tell them if you exclusively breastfeed there is a high chance that you are going to lose weight and uh, have your body control. Now coming to the advantages to the family, society and the hospital. To the family of course, see what is the substitute to human milk? Substitute to human milk is formula feeds. Formula feed is very costly, you know, you need to buy one or two tins per week. It's going to be very costly. So it is going to be affordable for the family, you know, economically affordable. And the baby is going to have less illnesses, less infections. When they're going to have less infections, less hospital races. Again, there is an economical uh, decrease in the economical burden. And of course, family bonding. Breastfeeding is not something between the mother and the baby alone. It is something that should involve the father, the grandparents. You know, everyone in the family should be conducive. The environment should be conducive for the mother to breastfeed her infant. Now, come to the hospital. What are the advantages for the hospital? Less staff is needed if you really teach breastfeeding to a baby, uh, to a mother. And uh, if the technique is really right, the mother will give, go on giving feeds. You, they will not call you call the nursing staff every now and then. But if the baby is on formula feeds, the nursing staff may have to give the feed. So, less staff is needed. Again, less infections. And um, once breastfeeding is established, the emotional environment will be conducive, you know, for a postnatal ward. And it is safer. Now, for the society, when you have good, uh, you know, babies who are exclusively breastfed with good IQ, they are going to be better individuals, good personality, better individuals, economical development and human resource development. So, these are the advantages. You can see from where to where we reach. Uh, from the advantage to the baby, we have reached advantages to the nation as such. Now, coming to the disadvantages of bottle feeding. So, of we know there are there are two aspects to this bottle feeding with formula feeds and bottle feeding otherwise so if not directly breastfed what the mother does is she expresses some uh, breast milk that's called express breast milk or an easier convenient uh, option that nowadays mother take is take formula feeds but mind you formula feeds are not safe they are just not safe and on top of that, if you start giving bottle feeds to the baby, you're causing more harm than good. So what happens when you start bottle feeding? You know, what happens uh, when the baby has to suck at the breast, the baby has to put in a lot of effort. You know, uh, the baby has to put in a lot of effort. It's a lot of exercise for the baby. But if you conveniently give in a nipple with a large hole, you just tilt the nipple, all the uh, milk flows in. It is very convenient for the baby. Baby does not have to do any work. So, we all are lazy, you know. By nature, we are all lazy, including our newborn. So, they would prefer to go for bottle feeding than go for a direct breastfeed. And this in turn is going to decrease your breast milk. We will see how after some time. Then nipple confusion. 
okay the if you have seen the teats of the uh, bottle the nipples of the uh, feeding bottles you would see that the, the holes are really you know the, the big size holes so once you tilt the bottle all the milk is going to flow out but it's not the case with the nipples nipples have to actually those ducts uh, they go, they are the openings of the ducts and they have to open up so they can be nipple confusion more we told no more uh, infections it, it's proven that the incidence rate of asthma diarrhea pneumonia all these are on a high on in bottle fed infants and more allergic disorders we talked about that caries caries of the uh, teeth especially the uh, incisors are very common in bottle fed babies bad eating habits they will be reluctant to take solid feeds and of course it is very expensive so the same with formula feeds we told formula feeds have the disadvantage formula feed is just modified cow's milk okay it's just modified cow's milk it has its own disadvantages in the form of being inferior in the nutrition value being inferior in the immunological value causing conditions like allergic colitis causing constipation and of course it's very costly you know it has to be diluted in the correct technique and given otherwise it can cause more harm than good so formula feeds are something which can, should not be used in no, newborns there are specific indications where you can go for formula feeds and nowadays it's not formula feeds which is the second option it is a pasteurized human donor milk so there is something called pasteurized human donor milk i'll just touch upon that at this point of time so nowadays we have something called human milk banks like blood bank we have something called human milk bank okay human milk bank so uh, we have milk banks where mothers with excess milk they go and donate milk this milk is collected it is uh, uh, stored uh, in uh, freezers then they is pasteurized and after pasteurization it is microbiologically checked for any growth and once this is all done it is given to babies who are in need of milk so suppose you have a preterm baby whose mother does not have enough milk or you have a baby who has lost uh, his or her mother or the mother is really sick and you have you don't have breast milk or breast feeding you have to look for an alternative option your second option always if available will be a pasteurized donor human milk okay even if that is not available only or in places where you do not get pasteurized human donor milk you go for formula feeds and there are specific indications which should be followed by prescribing a formula milk okay now what are pre lactial feeds pre lactial feeds are feeds which are given prior to onset of or prior to initiation of breastfeeding so um, many uh, customs rituals and religions have their own uh, ways of giving pre lactial feeds in the uh, form of uh, you know some places they give gold some places they give medicine some places they give some water you know so there are uh, they give sugar so there are different pre lactial feeds and pre lactial feeds should not be given to newborn especially because they can be contaminated and can cause infections in the first 48 hours the baby you know immediately after birth you initiate the baby on breast feeds and colostrum is only what is needed in the first 48 hours what are the disadvantages of a pre lactial feed so something if you give prior to uh, initiation breast feeding what will happen it will decrease the suck desire to suck it decreases the lactation if the baby does not suck mother is not going to produce milk we see that in the physiology there will be lactation failures and more infections okay now let's come to the different types of milk so we know there are different you know, human what the different types of milk that a human consumes or a human baby consumes one is the mother's own milk so there is a uh, uh, abbreviation called mom so mom is mother's own milk okay just an mcq point mother's own milk this is mom right so uh, babies consume human milk then you have the formulas and third you have animal milk of course the most common is cow's milk so let's have a comparison between these three types of milks so let's with regard to proteins 
proteins are higher in animal milks we already told that infant formula is just a modified uh, cow's milk so it is partly corrected but still the load is higher than human milk in human milk the load is less and whatever protein is there it is of good quality easily digestible now fats the amount of fats in human milk is ideal for the baby's growth and this also includes your essential fatty acids which is important for your brain growth. Also there are lipases which help in breakdown of fats. In animal milk essential fatty acids are absent and there is no lipase so breakdown of fat is difficult. And again in infant formula because it is cow's milk there is no lipase. There is enough quantity of water which is needed for the hydration of the baby in, animal, in human milk. When you give animal milk, extra water is needed because the solute load is really high. And again, in infant formula, the dilution should be correct. So, extra water may be needed. Anti-infective properties, nothing to say about it. The human milk has, is the best among the lot for anti-infective property. And for the uh, infant formula and the cow's milk, it is really less because it is not of the same species as the human. A very commonly asked question in your theory exams is the difference between cow's milk and human milk. So, you should know about the calories. You, uh, basically, it is uh, ideally the same. Uh, calories come to about uh, 67 kilocalories for uh, human milk and cow's milk around uh, again 70 kilocalories per 100 ml of uh, cow's milk. Now, the protein content, I told you the protein content is really high. There is 3 gram per 100 ml and for human milk is 1.1 gram. But that in mind, I will tell you the casein content is more. Casein is the uh, poorer protein. Whey protein is the better protein. Whey protein is high. See, the ratio it is 40 is to 60 of whey protein in human milk. And uh, for casein, it is lacked globulin, uh, lacked albumin. I'm sorry, it is lacked albumin there in human milk. And uh, this is lacked globulin in cow's milk. And it is 80 is to 20 ratio. Human milk is the sweetest milk. So, you can see 7 gram of lactose there. It is less in cow's milk. Fat, unsaturated fatty, as, fatty acid, essential fatty acids in human milk. It is saturated fats in cow's milk. Vitamins are all vitamins except vitamin K and D. Again, a question. Except vitamin, the what are the vitamins not present in human milk? Vitamin K and D. That is why vitamin K is given at birth. You supplement from outside and vitamin D, you give continuous vitamin D up to 1 year according to the AJ guidelines. Now, minerals, there is an increased solute load on the kidney. So, there is uh, in uh, due to cow's milk. So, the load on the kidney is high. And in human milk, though the amount is low, the calcium, phosphorus, all this amount is low, but there is better bioavailability. The iron content of human milk also depends on the mother's iron content. So, uh, iron is present in human milk, but the mother should be on uh, iron supplementations. Now, coming to the composition, all what we said is about the uh, what we tell the uh, fixed composition of the uh, human milk. Now, coming to the dynamic changes that happen to the human milk. So, human milk is not static. The human milk you take on day 1, day 7, day 14, day 30 will be different. So, there is a dynamic change which is happening to your human milk. So, that depends on the gestation age of the baby, stage of lactation and even during a feed there are different types of milk coming. So, according to the gestational age, you have a preterm milk and a term milk. So, preterm milk and term milk are different because preterm milk uh, is needed, uh, the baby should catch up fast. So, it is needed for the fast growth of the baby. At the same time, the solute load on the kidney should be less because kidneys are not functioning as a mature term baby. So, that is how a preterm milk differs from a term milk. Now, according to the stage of lactation, in the first 48 hours, you have something called colostrum. Colostrum, as you know, is the uh, yellow colored milk that comes, very small amount, that is a colostrum. After about 2 to 3 days, you have something called the transitional milk. It is more like a dilute milk, you know. If you add uh, milk in water, you get a dilute milk, you know, that is something like dilute milk. And by the end of one week, you have something called the mature milk. So, mature milk, again, during a feed, it differs. In the first 5 to 10 minutes, the breast, in the breast, you have something called the four milk and after that, you have something called the hind milk. We will come to that. Now, preterm versus term milk. What are the difference? 
there is higher protein for the better growth of the baby the baby should catch up no and of course higher amounts of immunoglobulin lactoferrin there is again higher fat with essential fatty acids vitamins are higher especially vitamin a and e vitamin e is very important for preterm babies there is a low lactose content and you have all the growth factors there and the platelet other platelet activating factors also so this is all for the fast catch up growth of the preterm baby but the solute load solutes will be less because the load has to be less on the kidney now coming to colostrum what is colostrum colostrum is called the first milk it was also called the witch's milk so it is not something that is of witches earlier it was it is a misnomer it is not a witch's milk it was called so it is the first milk that the a mother produces so it's a thick fluid yellow consistency okay if you can see uh, it is yellow in color it is thick in consistency you know it is called the uh, yellow gold okay right it is produced uh, during lactogenesis lactogenesis to me there are two stages of lactogenesis that we not go into it is about one to two uh, by the uh, in the first 48 hours it is produced it gives about 58 to 70 calories per 100 ml it is high in protein, electrolytes, sodium, potassium, chloride and vitamin A and it is teeming with immunoglobulins and live cells. So that is why it is called the first vaccination. It also has the lactobacillus bifidus factor. Okay. Now coming to the, I told you that was according to the, uh, the um, stage of lactation. Now coming to the dynamic changes during a single feed. So I told you in the first 5 to 10 minutes the breast produces something called as a 4 milk. 4 milk is something like, uh, now I'll tell you, uh, water mixed with sugar, okay, uh, sugar water. So there is water content which helps in the hydration of the baby and there is lactose which gives your glucose, you know, for energy. But this is lower in fat. So you can see here, even when you compare these two, you can see it is a light colored thin milk. You know? uh, so that is because there is no fat there. It is only glucose and water okay, or lactose and water. The next comes the hind milk, which is a thicker milk. There is more fat content. You can see it looks very creamy. You no, know? looks very creamy. So uh, it is high in, carbo uh, high in fats, low in carbohydrates. And after about 10 minutes of breastfeeding this is released what is the importance of knowing four milk and hind milk when you feed a baby usually what you know uh, the uh, your grannies tell if you do not if you do not feed from both the breasts the breast size will differ and will look very ugly and the mother will look very ugly so what they do is they feed for five minutes from one breast they feed for five minutes from the other breast and go on alternating this but what happens is at the end of the day what happens is the baby gets only four milk when the baby gets only four milk, what is going to happen? There is only glucose. There is no fat. There is no protein. There are not much protein content. So the baby is not going to gain weight. So if you give four milk alone, the baby is not gaining weight. Baby will not gain weight. Again, what will happen if you take lots of sugary fluids? You are going to have osmotic diarrhea. The baby will start having loose stools. So this is called the four milk syndrome. Okay. This is called the four milk syndrome. Four milk syndrome basically is the in the baby will present. Usually loose stools are not very common in newborn. Loose stools, if happens in a newborn, you should take it with great care. You know, you, it's a red herring. So if suppose you have the first thing you ask is how is your breastfeeding? Is the baby being predominantly four milk fed? That is what you should ask. So what is the correct technique for the baby to gain weight and to uh, for uh, the loose stool stop the correct technique would be the mother should empty one breast so completely empty one breast then only she should change the baby to the other breast so when she completely empties one breast the baby gets both the four milk and the hind milk and when she gives, goes to the other breast the baby might drink maybe only a little of the other breast after two hours when she starts feeding again she should give the second breast the breast which was not fully emptied she should give it for the first time and then change on so that the breast size won't differ. At the same time, the baby is getting both four milk and hand milk and the baby is going to gain weight. Okay. Now coming to the contraindications to breastfeeding. So there are only very, very few contraindications where the, the, when you say don't breastfeed. 
okay so one is galactosemia you know galactosemia galactose uh, from the milk cannot be uh, assimilated by the baby it's a metabolic disorder where you cannot give breast milk next if the mother is on cancer chemotherapy if the mother is presently on cancer chemotherapy she cannot give uh, if the mother has undergone some radioisotope procedures Uh, for that that's a temporary indication maybe for one or two days you stop breastfeeding if the mother is on illicit drugs like cocaine and fencyclidin and active tuberculosis again active tuberculosis you say uh, if the mother is having active tuberculosis she should maintain hand hygiene cough hygiene she should wear a mask and she can feed but at least for the first two weeks when there is very high chance uh, uh, if the mother especially if the mother is really sick uh, breastfeeding uh may be with health so it is not an absolute contraindication sort of again a relative contraindication is a very sick mother mother in the icu where can be but again you can give express breast milk at that time it's just for direct breastfeeding which is a contraindication but the other cases like galactosemia chemotherapy radioisotopes cooking you cannot give express breast milk also now coming to some special situations will you breastfeed in hiv mothers if can an hiv mother breastfeed So, according to the national guidelines of India, breastfeeding is the first choice of feeding a newborn born to a mother with HIV. So, um, but uh, worldwide guidelines they give two all alternatives: either breastfeed or formula feed. So, either of uh, of these two, never both together. They should never be mixed feeding. If you are deciding on starting formula feeds, they should stick to formula feeds. If you are deciding on breastfeeds, you can stick to breastfeeds, but there is a, a fast uh, weaning of the breastfeeds at six months. It's not a slow weaning; it's a fast weaning. So, uh, artificial. So, but uh, since India is not a very well developed country, there are lower resources. The first option when you counsel would always be breastfeeding. So, breastfeeding is not contraindicated in mothers having HIV, and artificial feeding should be used only if it is affordable, feasible, acceptable, safe, and sustainable for six months. This is very important because one tin may last for only one week. So uh, initially, you know, you have all the josh, and you start on formula feeds. After one month, you see that your it's not meeting your budget. You stop formula feeds, shift on to uh, breast milk. What happens is when you give formula feeds, it's a foreign protein. There are going to be some uh, 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 breach in your intestinal mu mucosa. So on top of that, if you give the breast milk from the mother, HIV can be passed on from the breast milk. can be there is a possibility no not always but in that case the uh, the organism will be taken into the system first now covid 19 guidelines all of you know breastfeeding is not contraindicated in covid 19 in covid 19 the mother can continue to breastfeed by uh, maintaining good hand hygiene cough hygiene and wearing a mask but if uh, rooming in can be with help for some time after the breastfeed the baby can be kept about 6 feet away from the mother with another caretaker and another special situation would be babies uh, having a cleft palate okay babies having cleft lip and palate it is actually um, um, difficult to breastfeed if there is a, a you know a, a cleft of the soft and hard palate and lip uh, the seal will not be there so in that cases what uh, what they say is you continue breastfeeding with a deeper latch that will come to deeper latch if that is not possible only you go for bottle feeding so bottle feeding there are special teats available teat okay there are special teats available with uh, you know it's a long teat which will be there unlike the normal bottles it will be a long teat which can go in and um, the baby can feed without aspiration but it's very it is a very costly uh, 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 bottle uh, so basically what we do is we try for a deeper latch okay then you have hypotonic babies that we will come to later now what are the risks of artificial feeding all of us know what are the risks so whatever advantages breastfeeding has all those are disadvantages of artificial feeding more infections malnutrition vitamin a deficiencies allergies more morbidity and mortality overweight lower iq for the mother the mother may you know no contraception the mother may get pregnant soon and there is increased risk of anemia ovarian cancers and breast cancers 
Now coming to the breast anatomy, I'll just mention a few words about the uh, breast anatomy, nothing in detail. Breast anatomy, what you should know is there are lactiferous glands, okay. There are lactiferous glands uh, from where milk is produced. They pass through the ductules. They pass through the ductules to reach the lactiferous ducts and then there are lactiferous sinuses which open into the nipple. So, these are the alveoli, okay. The alveoli or the lactiferous glands where milk is produced. This is the duct, okay. And this dilated part is your lactiferous sinuses and from that the openings of the uh, ducts to the nipple. And then you also have something called the myoepithelial cells. Myoepithelial cells is what helps the contracting, okay, contracting of these uh, uh, units and uh, helping the passage of milk to the lactiferous sinuses, okay. So, uh, the lactif uh, the glands, the alveoli, the glands are which produce, which is acted upon by prolactin and the myoepithelial cells which help in injection in the milk to propel and go out is uh, acted on by uh, oxytocin. Okay. So, this is only what you have to know about the NMT. We just take care. It is This is the areola. Your lactiferous sinuses are beneath the areola. We will talk of that later. Now, hormonal influences two important hormones prolactin oxytocin. You have before even before starting of lactation. Uh, before starting breastfeeding, you have estrogen progesterone. Estrogen stimulates the ductule system, duct system to grow. Uh, it helps in the proliferation of the duct system and progesterone increases the size of the alveoli and the lobes. So, that happens when the mother is in the antenatal period. And after birth, once you initiate breastfeeding, it is prolactin. Prolactin is the hormone which helps in the production of milk. It helps in the production of milk and oxytocin is the hormone. So, prolactin acts on the alveoli and oxytocin is a hormone that acts on the myoepithelium and helps in the ejection of milk in, you know, from the breast. Then you have the two re reflexes. So, uh, the same thing prolactin reflex what you see here. Prolactin reflex is the reflex that helps in milk production. So, when the breast baby is feeding, so all these reflexes, breast milk production and breast milk ejection, the stimulus is baby is feeding. So, sucking at the breast. So, nowadays, it is not just sucking at the breast. You can simulate sucking at the breast by using a breast pump or expressing. But whatever, when milk goes out of the breast, the brain understands that the milk is being uh, discharged or released. So, I always compare it to uh, the COVID period because before COVID, none of us used to wear masks. Even medical professionals never used masks. So, uh, in that initial 2019-20 phase, there was a phase when we never used to get masks. People were holding uh, N95s. N95 was not available in the market. But nowadays, you get N95 in all shapes and colors. You want even, N, uh, you know, the best of N95s you get. You want, I, if I want to match uh, my mask with this dress, I am going to get the same print of the dress on the mask. So, that common is because when the demand increased, the production increased. The same works in our body. When the brain feels that there is an increased demand of milk, it will produce more milk. And when will that increased demand of milk come? When the breasts empty the milk. If the breast does not empty the milk, milk will become stagnant here. Okay, what will brain understand? No one needs milk. Then why should I produce milk? I will not produce milk. And there will be decreased milk production and lactation fail. So, uh, prolactin is one hormone which is stimulated. When the baby sucks, uh, impulses are sent to the brain. Okay, the pituitary prolactin is released and prolactin helps uh, acts on the alveoli in milk production. Another hormone which acts at the same time is oxytocin which is released from the uh, posterior lobe of the pituitary which comes and acts in the myoepithelial cells and helps in release of milk. Prolactin is the highest at night. The level of prolactin is the highest at night. That is why it is very important that you continue night feeds to you know keep on uh, establishing breast milk. To have good amount of breast milk you should continue feeding the baby even at night. Now, maternal reflexes, I told you the prolactin reflex and the oxytocin reflex. And what are the reflexes in the baby? You have the sucking reflex. Baby should suck, you know. Then you have the rooting reflex. Rooting reflex is the first thing. So, turning the breast, when you stroke the breast, uh, the cheek of the baby with the breast, 
the baby turns to that side then only you can start feeding so first you have the rooting reflex then you have the sucking reflex then you have the swallowing reflex so these are the reflexes in the baby now coming to the adequacy of breast milk how do you know that the baby is getting enough breast milk for the mother it is one the breast becomes soft after feeding you know it will be usually if there is good milk the breast milk of very tense and as the breast milk is going into the baby the breast will become soft there is some there is there is something called let down reflex so what is let down reflex let down reflex means that once the mother starts feeding from one breast there is some ejection of milk from the other breast because uh, oxytocin will not come and act on see only baby is only feeding on the left breast i will only act on the that's not how a hormone works no hormone works on both breasts together so one when the baby is feeding on breast one breast some amount of milk is released from the other breast but there is no problem even if that milk goes the baby is not going to lose any milk so there is no need to store it is that drip milk drip milk is that milk that drips out no need to store that now from the baby's aspect how do you objectively determine if the baby is getting adequate breast milk that is for uh, there are four points there the best would be weight gain unless the baby is getting milk in an exclusively breastfed baby unless the baby is getting good milk he is not going to gain weight that's logic right yes so if the baby gains about 25 to 30 g per day so first 10 days you know the baby loses weight in the first 5 days again gains weight and by the 10th day he has to reach his birth weight in preterm babies this is a much this is a bit more later usually a term baby gains about 25 to 30 g per day and a preterm about 20 g per day so if the baby is getting adequate weight gain if there is adequate weight gain in an exclusively breastfed baby it means that the breast milk is adequate usually what happens is mothers you know babies cry for a umpteen number of reasons but mothers feel that whatever the cry is it is a hunger cry and they start uh, you know complimentary feeds even at 2 months and 3 months you ask them why because the baby is crying but if you see the baby would be you know almost a, an overweight baby 3 months 6 kg 3 months a uh, four months seven kg and all that that's because the mother has enough breast milk but still they feel that the baby is crying because he is hungry so you have to counsel them in such a way that to tell them let's see your baby is gaining enough and more weight that is because you have good milk so please do not introduce complimentary feeds at this time right and then crosses birth weight i told you pass as fast as urine 68 times it's not 68 sometimes 8 to 10 times also baby pass they'll drink they'll pass they'll drink they'll pass so passes urine 68 times a day and after a feed they sleep uh, you know comfortably for about newborns about 1 and 1/2 to 2 hours and older infants for about 2 to 3 hours now how much milk is enough for a baby or how much milk is enough for a baby usually what happens is when the mother is born Uh, even a medical professional who is not well aware of lactation goes to the mother just presses at her breast and see nothing comes out only one or two drops of colostrum comes out she declares or he declares that the mother does not have breast milk once the mother the primary mother hears from a medical professional that she does not have milk breast milk she has put it into her mind that no i am not having milk i need to give formula to my baby that concept is wrong you should know how much milk a mother will produce in a day or how much a baby will need in a day then only you can decide if the mother is producing enough for that day so the amount produced on day 1 is not the same as day 2 is not the same as day 3 a primary mother or any new mother that is what we expect the milk to go on increase in the first day you cannot expect milk to just flow out like that understand so on day 1 it is just the size of a cherry the baby's stomach so you need only about 4 to 6 ml per feed that you, you will easily get from your colostrum on day by day 3 it is about size of a walnut so you will uh, require about 20 ml of milk by about one week size of an apricot about 45 to 60 ml of milk and about one month it is size of a neck that will come to about 80 to 150 ml so only by about one month he will need so much milk day one the colostrum is more than enough that 4 ml of colostrum per feed is more than enough to fill the baby why do you want to push in more milk into that by giving formula no, no. so this is one concept that you should know then how frequent should you feed a baby baby should be fed 
every two to three hours, every two hours and on demand. So in between the baby might you know pee and then he feel hungry. So on demand feeding also should be there. That is very important. Night feeds are very important. Why? I told you prolactin. See when your maid comes to the house, suppose you have a maid in your house. Every day the maid is coming to your house at one o'clock but your house is locked. Do you think that maid will come again? He will stop work and go. So you should be available there for the maid to work. Right? So what will happen? At night prolactin is coming. She is staying for the 12 hours. She is saying that 12 hours baby has not dressed well. Then why should I come? She will go. She will stop working. Right? Then will be decreased breast milk. So it is important that the mother feeds the baby at night. Then only the prolactin can work because prolactin is secreted. All good things in our body are secreted at night. Prolactin, growth hormone, everything you know have high levels at night. So you should not omit night feeds. Baby after uh, older baby that is infants more than six months may sleep for about four to six hours of a good after a good feed. But in newborns that should go only up to two to three hours. Then there is something called when should you feed a baby? I told you demand feeding. So what is this demand? How do you know that the baby is hungry? Is it by crying? No, baby will cry for empty numbers. What are the different causes of crying in a baby? One is hunger cry. Second is baby is feeling sleep. Third is baby wants attention. Some babies always want to be cuddled. High needs baby that is called. Bites, insect bites, mosquito bite, and would have bitten the baby. Then you have sinister problems like sepsis, abdominal, you know, intestinal obstruction, scrotum, if it's a male baby, torsion, testis, okay, uh, the baby would have meningitis, uh, all those sinister problems can also be there, okay. Even a mother's hair forming a tunicate, sometimes, you know, when you have long hair, it may get entangled on the baby's limbs, it can cause a tunicate. So that also can cause a baby to cry, UTI, ear infections. Anything can cause a baby to cry. So how do you know it's a hunger cry? There are something called cues, feeding cues. This is very important nowadays in breastfeeding. They call it feeding cues. You have early cues, mid cues and late cues. Early cues says that, you know, baby will start when the baby, you know, baby is sleeping. He'll get up from sleep. He'll look around and start stirring. He'll open his mouth and he'll turn his head looking at his mother. So what is he saying? Ma, Amma, I'm feeling hungry. Mama, I am hungry. He's calm. Okay, I am hungry. After some time, the mother is busy. Maybe she is on Insta or she is on WhatsApp. She is busy. She is not looking at the baby. They will start yawning. Baby will start, you know, putting out his hands and legs. He'll, if he is in someone, he will start uh, uh, searching for the breast. What is he saying in that time? Mama, I am really hungry. Please feed me. Mama is still on Insta. She is not giving a look at her baby. Then the baby will decide, now let's see who is the boss here and he start crying. Once he starts crying, that is when the, when the mother puts down her phone and turns to the baby. But he is the boss there. Unless he stops crying, he is not going to feed. So they, those are the late cues. You should catch hold of the baby during the early or the mid cues. When you say, Mama, I am hungry or Mama, I am really hungry. Rather than make him tell you I'll show you who is the boss so in that early and mid case you should take him and start feeding okay so that is when that is when you decide demand feeding now coming to the breastfeeding positions you have something called the cradle hold where you hold the baby on, on your hand if you are going to feed from the baby from the left breast you hold the baby by the left hand support the baby by the buttocks okay the baby the how is the positioning of the baby the baby's back is straight Okay, back is straight, supported on the forearm of the mother. The, uh, the palm of the mother is on the buttocks of the baby. The baby is turned towards the mother. So, the baby's stomach will touch the mother's stomach and baby's uh, face will be turned towards the mother's breast. So, this is called the cradle hold. Then you have a cross cradle hold where instead of holding the baby with the left hand, for feeding the left breast, you hold with the right hand for feeding the right breast. So the hands will be supporting the neck of the baby and the rest of the body will be on the forearm. This is called a cross cradle hold. Then you have something called the football hold. What is a football? How do you hold a, fo hold a football? Like this, no? So, uh, in India, you can call it the pot hold. You know, that is how you know, in the villages, mothers carry pots. So you keep the baby under your uh, armpit. 
and support the neck of the baby and you feed the baby like this. So this is called the football hold. Then you have the laid back procedure where, uh, position where the mother can lay back and baby slightly tilted upwards 45 degree and she can feed and side line. The mother turns to her side, the baby is supine and she can feed the baby. So these are the different positions that you can adopt for breastfeeding. Mother's position that is. Now coming to the position of the baby. As I already told you the whole body of the baby should be supported. So if you are doing a cradle hold. I am supporting the neck in my cubital fossa. The back of the baby on my forearm and the buttocks and the legs by my hand. So this is a very small baby. Bigger baby you, your hands will be at the uh, buttocks. And the baby's body and head should be in a straight line. The baby should be turned towards the mother. The baby's uh, abdomen should touch the mother's abdomen, the baby's face should shape uh, the uh, touch the mother's breast. So this is how you position the baby. Now after positioning you have attachment. How do you attach? So attachment is basically how the baby latches onto, it's also called latching onto the breast. So if you remember earlier I told you if this is the nipple, areola and the breast. Okay. So this is your areola and the nipple. I told you all the lactiferous sinuses are here. So this is where milk is getting accumulated not at the nipple. Milk is not here. It is here. So if you just if the baby sucks only on the nipple what happens? It is like a tap. If there is no water in the tank. Is the tap going to give you any water? Initially, a bit, uh, two or three drops will come after that will stop. Similarly, if the baby sucks only at the breast, you will only get that last drops of milk which was there in the duct. The rest of it is here. Baby is not going to get any milk. He will go on feeding. What are the two problems there? Baby will not get milk. He will get angry. He will start biting on the nipple. Nipple is going to get sore. Second problem, baby is going to get tired he is going to lose weight because I told you feeding takes lots of energy from the side of the baby. Baby is feeding and feeding he is not getting milk so he is spending more energy than getting more energy. His output is more than input. So he will not gain weight. Right. So proper attachment is very important. So if there is a good attachment you can see whole of this areola will go into the baby's mouth. Okay. Whole of this areola should go into the baby's mouth. Only a crescentic shape part of areola should be seen above. If, as you can see here, crescentic part is seen above. The baby's mouth is wide. If you are if you are keeping a big thing into the mouth, what happens? The mouth becomes very wide. Obtuse angle. Mouth becomes wide. Only a crescentic shape of the areola is th seen. The chin will touch the breast and the lips will be pouted outwards. Just imagine you are keeping a big ladoo in your mouth. When you keep a big ladoo, what will happen? Ah, your mouth will become like that. If you are keeping a small thing in your mouth, what will happen? Something like the nipple. Your mouth is going to be just open like this. Your lips are just going to be open like this. Lips will not be wide open, will not be pouted outside. The chin will not touch. There will be a gap between the chin and the breast. Okay, and the mouth will be around the nipple and the whole of the areola can be seen. So this is a poor attachment which should not be there and this is the good attachment which should be there. Now what attachment is this? See the mouth is wide open only part of the only a small part of the areola is seen lips are turned outwards. So it is a good attachment and here see baby is sucking only the nipple only mouth is very uh, in the very small it's not opened at all lips are not pouted outside whole of the areola is outside so this is a poor attachment now third part or the third part of the technique so the technique we were talking about the technique of breastfeeding one is the position of the baby latching or attachment third thing so it is not enough that you position and the baby is, is latched you should know if the baby is getting milk that is called effective suckling so if you get good milk what happens you know, suppose I'll tell you an example. Uh, suppose you are given a good uh, shake. You are given a shaja shake uh, with a straw, a uh, bottle of you know a mug of uh, uh, hopefully appetizing shake with a spoon uh, with a straw, and there are a few uh, nuts and things like that. It's not very smooth. You start drinking. 
so what happens if your straw is all okay and there is no obstruction what will take you take deep sucks right deep sucks that is how you drink you know from a if suppose you have a straw here deep sucks you take if you are getting uh, the shake from that suppose there is a small peanut obstructing your straw what will happen you take shallow shallow sucks no so as to relieve the obstruction no similarly if the baby is getting enough milk what happens he takes deep slow suckers then he swallows the milk and you can hear the gurgling sound the uh, cheeks will be full the gurgling sound will be there suppose he is not getting milk he is sucking only at the nipple what happen there will be fast and shallow sucks which happen and the cheeks won't be full you cannot he will not look like he is drinking milk right now after feeding there is something called burping so what is burping just uh, when you feed when the baby sucks he not only takes in milk he takes in lots of air also so that air has to go out otherwise there will be abdominal distension colic abdominal pain and all that so burping what you do is you are trying to get out the air from the stomach uh, so you can just put the baby on uh, the shoulder with the tummy at the shoulder level and slowly uh if suppose this is my baby i'm putting him at the shoulder level and from the abdomen or uh, below the upwards i am just trying to push out the air so i can also do it in the sitting position i can make the baby sit and then uh cup the back or i can place the baby on my thigh suppose my thigh if you the baby on my thigh and then burp the baby so it's very important you do that so that the baby does not have problems colicky abdominal pain now coming to the last part of our class for today which is breastfeeding problems so you know all mothers usually have uh, some or the other breastfeeding problem if not correctly initiated on breastfeeding so problems will be there for the mother in the form of nipple problems for the baby okay so baby problems are usually your failure to gain weight as i told you mainly because predominantly four milk fed or the mother has decreased milk breast milk or the, even the attachment is not good latching is not good or loose stools as i told you four milk syndrome then the baby might not be getting enough feeds maybe having long gap between feeds night feeds are not given so all such things should be given if the baby has conditions like cleft palate i told you if cleft palate is there what you do you give a uh, uh, deep latch so if suppose there is a cleft why because uh, what happens when the breast goes in this is the tongue this is the palate the uh, breast uh, the uh, areola part the tongue presses the breast against the palate to release the milk so there is a suctioning going on there suppose this palate is cleft there is nothing to hold on in the upper part no there is nothing to hold on so that pressure cannot be created for that you have operated devices but those are not commonly used now use a deep latch you put uh, push a little more bit more of the breast tissue inside so what happens is this breast tissue will go and seal the gap and then the baby can feed even if that is not possible you uh, use long teats bottles with long teats and another thing is baby with hypotonia so this is a hypotonic baby this baby cannot hold the breast so what you do is you you always you have to support the breast because this, even in a normal baby you have a small mouth and a big breast so you support the breast by three fingers placed below the breast and then her catch hold of nipple and give so here you can do something called uh, you can support the baby's chin also while feeding okay so uh, it's it's called a dancer's hold okay dancer's hold or a u hold or dancer's hold. nothing you are supporting the chin of the baby so that the, because there is hypotonia if you don't support what will happen the head will fall like this so you are supporting the chin of the baby while feed okay just know the name that is it now breastfeeding problems mothers problems usually the most common one is an inverted nipple so what happens inverted they can be flat nipple and inverted nipple flat nipple is much easier to correct than inverted nipple so there are many stages of inverted nipple one if the nipple is flat uh, or inverted you try to pull out the nipple nipple uh, stays out for some time you know it gets protracted and stays out for some time it is called grade 1 inverted nipple if it retracts if once you pull 
pull that out and, it, and you release it goes back it is grade 2 nipple if you cannot pull at all it is grade 3 nipple so what is the uh, what do you do for uh, nipple uh, correction you do something called as uh, a nipple correction you can do syringing so initially what we used to do is the cut syringe technique you used you should you used, you used to take a 20 cc 20 ml syringe you cut one end of the syringe where you attach the needle you cut that and you place that on the nipple and pull out the plunger so by that negative suction your nipple will come out like this so you cut that and you keep it here and pull out but this is very painful so now we adopt something called as a two syringe technique so you have a syringe like this so this is the uh, IV connector that yellow part is the part where uh, the tip of the IV set you no know, you will get so you connect these two one end uh, one syringe has the plunger or another syringe has the plunger remote okay and then you keep here uh, keep at the breast and pull from this side so when you pull from so this part will go to the breast and you will pull from here when you pull from here uh, the the nipple will come out so this is a less uh, painful technique and slowly you release and feel sometimes after some time what will happen nipple may go in again again you have to keep on doing it other options are nipple shield not much uh, encouraged but still you can use and you have another other teeth sort of and then sore nipple so sore nipple or the uh, breast problems start have different levels the first thing is sore nipple i told you when the baby sucks only at the nipple he'll get angry he'll bite and the nipple will become sore there'll be crack there'll be bleeding after some time, in, you know, there will be collection, the milk, because he is feeding only at the nipple, milk is not getting ejected, milk will stay there, there will be breast engorgement. After that, some inflammation will set in, there will be redness, erythema pain, it is called mastitis. And at the end, an infection will set in and there will be an abscess in the breast, it is called abscess. So, this is a spectrum of what happens to the breast. So, sore nipple is basically due to the incurrent feeding technique. Also, there can be dryness leading to cracking when you, you know, frequently wash with soap and water. And pulling, when the baby is sucking, if you just pull off the breast like, you know, baby's, I told you, baby's hold is very strong. So, you should slightly release the uh, suction and then only take out the baby. And this can lead to fungal infection of the breast also because you can see, see, there is some soreness here. It is, it's a cracked nipple that you see here. And what is the treatment? The treatment is correct technique, correct latching and after each feed you can apply some hind milk and air dry the nipple so that the hind milk is rich in fat so it acts as an emollient also. Now coming to I told you after some time milk will get accumulated there there will be breast engorgement and then there will be inflammation which is mastitis. When this stage sets in, there will be fever, tachycardia, chills, riga, there will be pain in the breast, breast will become red and tender. So, this is a pre-runner of an abscess which is going to happen there. Usually, there will be infection with uh, methicillin sensitive, staph aureus, corns and streptococcus viridis. And what is the treatment? Antibiotics. Mind you, you can continue feeding. Question, continue feeding. But when you come to the next stage when there is an abscess, you have to drain the abscess, continue antibiotics and here you can withhold feeding till the abscess resolves. But the other breast can be fed. Here you can withdraw if the milk is purulent. Okay. Right. If the milk is purulent. Then baby problem. Or it will be oral thrush. Oral thrush is oral candidiasis. Fungal infection. So how do you find out? When there is a sore nipple, there will be a fungal infection. When the mother feeds, she is going to give it to the baby. It can be other way around also. Oral thrush is very common in newborn. The baby can give it to the mother. So, if you see oral thrush, there is whitish flake, like you know, curdy lesions on the lips. Whole of the buccal cavity, it is there. So, when you try to scrape up the lesion, it will be very painful. There will be bleeding. You have to distinguish this from something called the milk tongue. Milk tongue is basically just that coating which is there, whitish coating which is there on the tongue. It is easy to scrape out. Nowhere else it will be there. What is the treatment? Treatment will be topical. Nistatin. Nistatin is an antifungal or what we commonly use is clotomazole. Okay. Clotomazole creams uh, can be used. 
so that is the treatment of candidiasis and when you treat you should treat both the baby and the mother at the same time the same topical preparation can be used for the breast because if you only treat here baby is again going to get from here if you only treat here you should, maybe my mother is only always going to get from that so if you get a baby with oral thirst always uh, look for uh, the uh, candidial or fungal infection of the nipple in the mother now just a few words the closing slides on baby friendly hospital initiative baby friendly hospital initiative was first established or first started in 1992 why was this done because the use of formula was very high so because uh, the breastfeeding rates became very low uh in 1992 the who started the initiative known as the baby friendly hospital initiative uh it was organized by unicef and uh, as a part of this uh, initiative we also have the world breastfeeding day <laughs> can I get a question uh, which is celebrated from the first first week of august first to 7th of 7th of august okay it was launched in 1992 and india adopted it in 1993 and the first city to become uh, baby friendly was kochi in kerala okay and the first district was ernakulam now the initial bfhi guidelines had 10 steps to successful breastfeeding now that has been changed and there is a new amendment that has come in 2018 so there are 10 steps initially every all the 10 steps so basically uh, the content is all the same it talks about training the staff about what you should do to the mother what you should do to the baby and what you should not do uh, for or uh, which is not uh, indicated for uh, breastfeeding now in the latest guidelines they have put it under various subheadings that is the only difference and there are a few changes so the first two steps in the successful uh, uh, the 10 steps for successful breastfeeding according to the 2018 baby friendly hospital uh, initiative is uh, first two deals with the critical management procedures that is how you manage the uh, whole thing so one first thing is you should comply with the international code of marketing and the uh, who smd resolutions second you should have a written feeding policy and third thing there should be an ongoing monitoring so this is the basically logistics or the administration part and the second point there would be the staff having enough knowledge and competence that is very important all these were there in the previous guidelines but now they have actually uh, you know put that uh, into uh, categories and it, the uh, definitions are more defined that is only thing and the third point deals with the key clinical practices that is you have to discuss the importance of breastfeeding with pregnant mothers that is very important antenatal counseling is very important so you have to discuss the importance and management of breastfeeding with pregnant mothers even before they deliver fourth thing is immediately after delivery you should facilitate immediate skin to skin contact and initiation of breastfeeding fifth one you should support mothers to initiate and maintain breastfeeding and deal with common difficulties sixth one do not provide breastfeed breastfed infants with any other foods no prenatal feeds nothing else uh, only medically indicated drugs or vitamins should be given you should ro help rooming in 24 hours the baby and the mother should not be separated so there was a there is a trend where babies are taken to the nicu kept in the nicu even without any problems so you normal baby should be roomed in with the mother for 24 hours you should support the mother to recognize and respond to the infant's breastfeeding cues feeding cues we dealt with earlier you should counsel mothers on the uses and the risks of bottle feeding and you uh, you should discourage the use of teats and pacifiers and the 10th step is coordinate discharge so that they have an ongoing care so what basically happens is when you are in the hospital you teach everything you are there once the ba baby and mother is out of the hospital there is no one to support them so you should form support groups that is what this point deals with. so just going to the illustrations this is the unis of who illustrations that are here first is the hospital policy the administration no bottle feeds no formula feeds formula feeds should not be sold from the hospital breastfeeding should be the standard there should be a breastfeeding policy which is there second one staff competency you give training to the staff to improve the skill of the staff okay and the knowledge of this staff third thing is antenatal care so this is the 10 steps basically antenatal care you should support and teach the mother even in the antenatal or pregnant period about the management of breastfeeding and take care of the breast 
care right after birth immediately skin to skin contact help in initiating uh, breastfeeding so skin to skin contact is the fourth step and fifth step is initiating breastfeeding okay so what do you do you check the position teach them the position latching okay give them practical advice and help mothers deal with the common breastfeeding problems then supplementing you should tell them only breast milk should be given in exclusive breastfeeding uh, only exception is medications nothing else should be given if breast milk is not available i told you donor help milk and formula only if indicated next step is rooming in mothers and babies should be roomed in they should be skin to skin contact and roomed in for 24 hours a day so they should be let to set uh, a, a sit uh, roomed in even if the baby is sick the baby mother should be allowed to be with the baby and there is something called kangaroo mother care which can give for preterm babies responsive feeding responsive feeding is what deals with feeding with cues okay feeding cues so you look at the baby see and then you respond okay so responsive feeding the baby will tell you when he is hungry so identify the cues and then feed the baby discourage use of bottle teats and pacifiers and if at all if there is any indication suppose like left palatal only how tell them how to use them and discharge on discharge you help form support gives support groups you give them numbers where they can call and enquire as to what to do uh, once they have a problem or face a problem so with that we come to the end of today's class we'll just go back to a case if you remember counseling of a 28 year old primary who had just delivered so what will you tell them you will tell them all this you will tell them importance of breastfeeding you will tell them the advantages of breastfeeding you will show them the position you will show them proper latching attachment you will tell them how to know if the baby is feeding well how to know if the baby mother has adequate breastfeed baby is getting enough milk tell them about the stool consistency soft yellow stools how many times he will pass urine tell them the importance of night feeds tell them the importance of maternal diet maternal diet is very important galactogogues the best galactogogue is water you should also take high protein rich diet okay good quality the balanced diet is needed for the mother you tell them uh, how, what are the problems that the mother can get how to get over these problems whom to contact if there is a problem so all this you will be instructing the mother you will be telling them exclusively breastfeeding not to give anything else no pre lactal feeds no nothing else no water no juice nothing else other than breastfeeding also you tell them about immunization and complementary feeding complementary feeding usually starts after 6 months of age now we'll see a few mcqs from this topic first question is reflexes involved in breastfeeding what are the two reflexes i told you prolactin oxytocin see let's see here. prolactin is there oxytocin is not then routine reflex baby's reflex atnr we didn't hear of that sucking reflex of course in the baby so atnr is the uh Uh, wrong so so there should be an except also reflexes involved in breastfeeding except would be atn so all the three are involved in breastfeeding atn is not breast milk is a good source of vitamins except two vitamins one we give at birth as an injection k other we give as drops d so e is there d is not there a is there b is there so the answer is vitamin d and the last question in exclusive breastfeeding which practice is not correct Vitamin drops may be given, medicines may be given, water may be given, express breast milk may be given. Vitamin drops, yes. Medicines, yes. Water, no. Mother should drink more water so that breast milk contains enough water. Express breast milk can be given. Okay. So uh, there is something called top feeds. Top feeds means my mother is continuing breast milk and on top of that she is giving formula. So it's supplementing the top feeds. Okay. so uh, that is again under the terminology which is used in breastfeeding so with this we come to the end of today's session hope you have understood at least got some practical tips to uh, use in your personal life also to attend your mcqs and your theory exams thank you document